So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over this worksheet. And the first thing I want to do is kind of go over a little bit about, uh, you know, <clears throat> what this worksheet actually said or what, what we're trying to accomplish here. And we're saying that, uh, talking about work and energy, and we say by definition, other than, you know, what we've said before, that work is actually energy that is transferred by a force. Okay. It is energy, there we go, energy, transferred by a force. So what exactly is energy? All right, we've talked a little bit about this, but energy's definition actually is, uh, as we look it up, energy actually is the, where is it? There it is. Energy is actually defined as the ability to do work. Uh, so the definition here is kind of circular in this fashion, that work is energy transferred by force, and energy is something's ability to do work. So we see that these things are, in fact, uh, related. And uh, we can see that when we talk about the the definitions of such and see that when we talk about work and energy both being uh, called into play with the being done by joules okay both of them are, are calculated in joules okay so let's look at number one on his way off to college Russell drags his suitcase 15 meters from the door of his house to the car at a constant speed with a horizontal force of 95 newtons how much work does Russell do on his suitcase? So for this, we're going to have to first write down that the distance is 15 meters. Okay, so 15 meters. And that is equal to our distance. That's the first number we come to. Uh, and that we have a horizontal force of 95 newtons. That is our force. Okay, and what we're going to do from there is we have to find out what our equation is. We have work is equal to our force times our distance, as we know that's where our equation is from the top of the worksheet. And so, therefore, we will draw our outlets, and then we will draw our plugs for our numbers here just to see and we will connect them up as such plug them in get our electricity and therefore we will then get um, that equal to uh, 95 multiplied by 15 which will then give us an answer when we plug into our calculator of 1430 joules okay so that is our answer Number 1,430 joules. All right, number two. Katie, a 30 kilogram child, climbs a tree to rescue her cat, who's afraid to jump eight meters to the ground. How much work does Katie do in order to reach the cat? So Katie's going to be climbing the tree, okay? And after she climbs the tree, we're going to find out how much work she does to actually climb it. So uh, the first thing we're going to put down here is 30 kilograms for the weight of Katie. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a distance uh, that she climbs in the tree of about 8 meters. Let me fix that. So we have 8 meters here. How much work does Katie do in order to reach the cat? So we know that work is equal to... That's what we're looking for, work. Okay. And when we do this, we have work is equal to force times distance. Uh, however, in this equation, we're trying to find the force. Uh, and we see that we have kilograms here. So what we're going to have to do is convert those kilograms into um, newtons. And we do that by using the weight. And we know that force is equal to, or the weight is equal to mass times gravity where gravity is equal to 10, so uh, we have the mass times gravity times the distance, which, as we know, is actually the same thing as potential energy, which we'll talk about in a couple problems here. 
um, and that gets us back into our work energy theorem. So we have our plugs here, and we have our outlets. We know that G is automatically going to be 10. So when we connect these things through, we have 8 goes into the D spot. We have 30 going into the mass spot. So we have 30 multiplied by 10, the gravity, multiplied by the distance of 8 meters. And that's going to give us an answer as we plug into our calculator of, it's going to be, 2400 joules okay so that's the amount of work that's being done um, for Katie to get up into the tree 2400 joules okay number three Atlas and Hercules two carnival side so strong men each lift 200 kilogram barbells two meters off the ground Atlas lifts his barbell in one second and Hercules lifts his in three seconds so for part a which strong man does more work? For part B, calculate which man is more powerful. All right, so let's go ahead and write out here for Atlas. Let's put him down. And we'll write Hercules, making sure I spell this correctly. Hercules. There we go. Okay. Be more careful. All right, so Atlas lifts a mass of 200 kilograms and does so and lifts at a distance of two meters. Hercules lifts a mass of 200 kilograms. Come on, paper, stop moving. And goes a distance of two meters as well. So we have to find the work. Uh, and when we work to that, we have to make sure that we do multiply this by the G10, as we've shown, just trying to do some shortcuts here. So work is equal to force times distance here. So we have the 200 or 2,000, excuse me, because as we know, uh, multiplied by the 2 meters. And over here we have the work is equal to the force times distance as well, which is equal to 2,000 uh, multiplied by 2 meters as well on this side, yes. Uh, and we know that that is equal to how we get the force is we have... 200 times 10 to give us 2,000, so that is our force uh, there. So as we calculate this out, we see that uh, this guy has 4,000 joules of work being done, Atlas does, and Hercules has also 4,000 joules of work being done. So for part A, the work being done by both men is the same, okay? So they're both doing 4,000 joules of work. Now, for part B, which man is more powerful? Well, we know that power, let me write it over, make sure we got room here. Power is equal to work divided by time, which we know is also, you know, we can write as force times distance over time. Uh, since we've already calculated the work, we can just put that in there. We don't have to do the force uh, times distance here. So, uh, which equals to 4,000 divided by, Atlas did his in, um, moved his, what was this saying here? This said uh, one second, okay? And our buddy over here, Hercules, did his in three seconds. So we just divide 4,000 divided by one, uh, which gives us a power output of 4,000 watts, okay? 4,000 watts, and we have 4,000 divided by three, which is going to give us an answer of 1,000, 1,333 um, watts, but we're going to convert that to 1,330 1, watts. And so we see that Atlas has uh, the higher uh, number here, so he gets the 4,000 joules, 4,000 watts, excuse me. And so that is where we have our answer is 4,000 watts. He has a larger amount. Okay, moving on to number four. It is said that Galileo dropped objects off the Leaning Tower of Pisa to determine whether heavy or light objects fall faster. If Galileo had dropped a 5-kilogram cannonball to the ground from a height of 12 meters, what would have been the change in potential energy or PE of the cannonball? Well, uh, this is something we've talked a lot about over time, so let's put this. Mass is equal to 5 kilograms uh, of the ball, and the 
let's see here, the distance that it's falling is 12 meters. And uh, as we're talking here, we're talking about what is the change, as it asks, what is the change in potential energy? Well, um, when we talk about change, that means as it goes from one to another, or, you know, as the, ch the difference in between your starting potential energy and your finishing kinetic energy. So if we draw in a little leading tower of Pisa here, and, you know, just sort of here, and we draw the ball dropping uh, from a distance of 12 meters and coming down to the ground, we see the potential energy at the ground is actually going to be zero because there's no height involved. Uh, so we know that the difference in the potential energies is going to be whatever the potential energy is at the top because whatever it is minus zero is going to be our change, right? Anything subtracted from zero is itself. So the potential energy equation, you know, is mgh, um, but we... Uh, what we need to do here is our H can actually be distributed or shown as our distance D here. Um, our distance is 12 meters is our height. So work is equal to force multiplied by distance. And we can see that our MG and our D here, as everything goes, are the exact same equation here. Okay, they're exact same uh, as we work through this. So uh, we can see once again that work and energy are related and they are the same thing. Uh, as they're both measured in joules. So let me move this down a little bit. We go here, we have 5 multiplied by our gravity, which is 10, multiplied by our height, which is the same as our distance of 12. Okay, so we see the mass uh, here is 5, and the height is 10. And the gravity is, uh, or excuse me, the height is 12, and the gravity is 10, sorry. And so we then use our calculator to multiply this stuff out to see what our change in potential energy is. And that is equal to 600 joules. So uh, the change of potential energy from 600 joules to zero joules is 600 joules. And that is going to be our answer for number four. Okay, moving on to number five. The 2000 Belmont Stakes winner, Commendable, ran the horse race at an average speed of 15.98 meters per second. If Commendable and Jockey Pat Day have a combined mass of 550 kilograms. What was their kinetic energy as they crossed the finish line? So let's go ahead and look at this, and we can put down that the uh, velocity that they are traveling at uh, is 15.98 meters per second. Uh, the combined mass of both the jockey and the rider is 550 kilograms and we're looking for the kinetic energy here so we look up at the top and see find our kinetic energy equation we say the ke is equal to one half ke is equal to one half mv squared okay so what we have to do here is we have to plug into our equation uh, and we have one half is equal to our mass, which is 550, multiplied by our velocity of 15.98 and squared. Now, what we're probably going to do to there, see the velocity is there and our mass is here as we plug in. Not drawing the things as much anymore, but we have to multiply. When you come plug in the calculator, make sure you do this portion first. The 15.98 squared is going to give you, uh, and then plug everything else in. So that gives you a kinetic energy that is going to be um, 70,224 joules, okay? That is our kinetic energy that they are moving at for their, um, when you take the horse and the velocity, knocking that thing over. Uh, so that's what we get for our kinetic energy as such as we follow that equation through and plugging in. Okay, for our next uh, problem before we get jumping on that one. I want to go over this because you see a couple different equations up at the top and uh, we see the actual equation for the conservation of energy is Ke uh, is equal to Pe and we have the Pe plus Ke is equal to the Pe plus Ke finals and then you have this velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh. Where does that equation come from? Well that equation comes from the other conservation of uh, energy equation that I did not write down, and that is mgh was potential energy is equal to the one half 
mv squared, which is our kinetic energy. So this is basically the before, you can call it the before uh, movement, and then you can call it the after uh, movement here with one half mv squared. So how do we get to that uh, situation here? Well, let's show how this equation comes from. And we're solving here, as we're gonna find out one second for number six, we're gonna solve for velocity. So what we have to do is we then have to multiply, we do algebraically multiply each side by two, which gives us a two mgh is equal to our mv, mv squared. And uh, after that, what we'll go through and we divide both sides by m as we go through and you see we cancel the m's out. So m, mass is not a factor in this problem. Uh, as we go through. So now we have 2gh is equal to velocity squared. And as we know, what you then have to do, uh, the opposite or the, the reciprocal thing is the uh, square root. So therefore, you get an equation of v is equal to 2gh, uh, square root of 2gh. And that is our equation, and that's how we get there. Of course, like I said, we can always do our ICBST. It can be shown that and uh, that's what we can do. Uh, I just want to show you exactly how to get to that point. Okay, so moving on with number, moving on with problem number six. As we go along here, uh, number six says that a 500 kilogram pig, okay, mass is equal to 500 kilograms, pig is standing atop of a muddy hill on a rainy day. Uh, the hill is 100 meters long. Um, distance, so distance, we'll put 100 meters long here. Uh, with a vertical drop of, uh, it equals to the height there, as we will say there, um, as well with a vertical drop of 30 meters. So actually, let's uh, let's cross this H out. Let's put the H is equal to 30 meters uh, right here. And I'll draw a picture uh, as soon as I finish writing these things down. 30 meters is the height of the hill. So the pig slips and begins to slide down the hill. And what is the pig's velocity at the bottom? Use the law of conservation of energy. So we've already converted that equation a couple seconds ago, so we'll do this. So let me draw my hill here and make sure I don't knock this whole thing off. And uh, we'll draw a little, little, little pig right here, see if we can... It looks like a pig, I guess. And this distance down the hill is 100 meters. But the height of the hill, uh, what we're going to talk about what for our potential energy is going to be that um, that height, okay? It's going to be the height, which we said was, what did we say, 30 meters. So that distance of 100 really isn't going to come into play here. That would only come into play if we actually were trying to find out what our velocity was and we had a time component uh, to it. So we don't need that. So we saw with the last thing we did, our equation, we're looking for V. Our V is equal to the square root of 2GH. Uh, as such, and uh, when we plug in our numbers, we have two. Uh, we have this. Let's see here. Yeah, we have the. Let me put it up here. We have the two uh, over the ten. Well, multiplied by ten, multiplied by our height of thirty uh, meters, and so that answer is ten going to get us to, as we calculate it out, to be uh, v is equal to twenty four point four nine or rounding up 24.5 meters per second. So that is going to be our answer uh, for how fast the pig slides down the hill uh, because of his height and his kinetic energy both being uh, the same. He gets to be down to that. Um, hopefully there, hopefully this helped you guys out with this uh, going through these problems as such. Hopefully you use this tool. Hopefully we can make some more in the near future. And uh, if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to uh, comment or email to me and uh, we can talk about it in class the next day. But once again, hopefully uh, this video, in fact, does help you out and you can use it to pause and re -go, go through back as such. We'll do the same thing when we get to machines here uh, shortly. So, sign up.